Restricted section Lisa mentioned? Hmm, doesn't quite feel like it though. You don't think this place is hiding some terrible secret, do you? Like those rooms you always hear about in scary stories? You know, the ones that are usually totally off limits? That's true. We just kind of waltzed in here. And it didn't seem like the lock had been broken or anything. Wait, hang on a minute. This isn't the door we came in through. Are we even in the library anymore? Not working today, otherwise we could ask her. Well, we're here anyhow, and this place doesn't look too dangerous. Why don't we just take a look around? New places are meant for exploring, after all. You gotta try all kinds of new things to become a good and experienced guide. You dare enter this fortress of doom without invitation? Prepare to be eaten alive! We should probably just leave it here for now. This place is huge, so let's keep on exploring! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
into the shadows. Oh no! Sorry! Guests, hello! I've been waiting here for the longest time and nobody came. I was only planning to rest my eyes for a bit, but the sofa was so comfy, uh, I guess I dozed off. Ah, the tiki talk! Sure can! Talking is one of the things I can do! Alright, so... Ah, yes! Introductions are in order, aren't they? Greetings, my dear guests. My name is... Uh... Wait, what's my name? Uh, not sure we can help you with that one, buddy. Guess you were at a pretty deep sleep, huh? Seems like you're still waking up. Huh? Really? We're just messing with you. <laughs> Anyway, Paimon's name is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. Okay, great, that went well. At least this mysterious room doesn't rob everyone of their memories. I must apologize. I must have slept for so long that I can't remember what's real and what's a dream anymore. I did have a lot of dreams while I was asleep. Okay, concentrate. Uh, Alright, so if I'm not mistaken, the current me is a concierge in charge of attending to any guests that find themselves here. Ah! Yes, you may call me Wolfie. Okay, but, um, if all you can remember are your dreams, what makes you think any of them are real experiences? They're just products of your imagination, right? You mean, if it comes from my imagination, it can't be real life? Oh, huh. well, it sounds like you know more about that kind of thing than I do. I can't tell the difference at all. I remember a time when a horrid curse was put on me. My heart was cased in unmelting ice, and I had to spend my days in agonizing solitude surrounded by nothing but boundless tundra. I also remember playing with White Fang in the misty forest. We chased golden butterflies, waded through rushing streams, and shattered the very moon beneath our feet. And I'll never forget marching in that celebratory procession with the other troops, being showered in confetti as I excitedly waited for Her Majesty the Queen to bestow her honor upon me. Ah, <sighs> it was glorious! To me, all these events are indistinguishable from real experiences. Take my latest dream, for instance. I remember being in a garden of forking paths, and Madame Mage said to me, From now on, you are a concierge. Be sure to treat your guests well. Then I found myself here. And like I said, I waited and waited and waited. And now, finally, two guests have arrived. At last, I can fulfill my duty. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me? Is she really just a figure from your dream? Seems like there could be more to it than just that. Well, Madame Mage is Madame Mage. Just as you, dear guests, are guests. She and her friends, uh, oh yes, and they're all mages too. Uh, each one of them is a master of their own type of magic. Conjuring, illusions, and so on. 
One of them uses a quill pen to cast her spells. She has a very mysterious ink bottle that contains fantasy truth. I had a little taste when she wasn't looking, and oh my goodness was it bitter! Blech. But the other mages all love her magic. They use their powers of creation to transform her fantasy truth into true fantasy. How do they do that? I haven't the slightest idea. I'm just a toy with stuffing for brains. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me? Yeah, what is this place? We came in here through this one door in the library, but we were never able to open it before. Ah, well, congratulations on your successful entry, dear guests. This is a special room, one that can only be accessed by those who are invited. Seeing as you two have this privilege, you can invite your friends to enter as well. On that note, I'd better tidy up this place as quickly as possible. Oh, and I should prepare some tea and snacks too. You don't mind if they're on the sweeter side, do you? Of course not! Wait, before we get ahead of ourselves, mind telling us where we are exactly? Are we even still in Mondstadt? Hmm, that is a difficult question. Madam Mage created this room using magic, and I don't know magic. Still, you have my guarantee as concierge that this is a safe and comfortable place. I sincerely hope you enjoy your time here. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me? Yes, I saw! You were magnificent! I was completely enraptured by your performance! What do you mean, performance? Well, Madame Mage says that every page of a storybook is a segment of the present. I'm sure only the most distinguished of guests are able to take the stage as the story's protagonist and put on a show as spectacular as yours. What a thrilling battle! Yes, that's what every story needs to spice things up. Naturally, those are the kinds of stories I love reading the most. I wonder what would make a good title for a book about your magnificent performance. Should we call it a saga? An epic? A tale of conquest? A chronicle of combat? Ah, <sighs> choices, choices. In any case, I do hope you will be so kind as to indulge us with more of your fine performances. In fact, scratch that. I'm afraid I shall have to insist. The story of the present is waiting to be written, and you, dear guests, are the ones to fill its pages. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me? This place is getting more confusing by the second, but Wolfie seems all right, so we should be fine, right? Besides, our goal is to set foot in every corner of Tevat, and the courage to boldly go where others dare not to tread is what will take us there. Wow, what a wonderful line! Spoken like a true adventurer! You bet! We're the real deal! Is that so? Well then, I'd better make sure I do my duty as concierge of this place. I hope this can be somewhere for you to rest and recuperate when you're weary, so that you can embark on your next adventure refreshed and renewed. Come back here any time if you get tired. I'll be sure to take good care of you. People often believe me to be highly focused on securing victories. I am a champion duelist, after all. The truth, however, is just the opposite. It is the spirit of the challenger that I value above all else. If someone is willing to face me head-on, they have my respect, no matter who secures the title of victor in the end. Strength is something that can be gained through experience. Courage, however, comes from within. You 
youngsters need to make sure you're getting enough exercise. You don't want to be huffing and puffing while your elders are still going strong. Why, this is a walk in the park compared to the field studies that Haravatat used to send us out on. <sighs> Never mind. No point in dredging up the past. Go on, then. I suppose you ought to rest if you really are tired. I've seen too many junior scholars ruin their health for the sake of their academic pursuits. Let that be a cautionary tale. Those who fail to heed the advice of their elders do so at their own peril. I'm afraid I still have some work to do before everything is ready. Thank you for your patience, my dear guests. If you'd like, you can take the stage and perform once more. There'll be toy medals waiting for you in treasure chests afterwards. Too weirded out if you see me with my mask off while we rest. I'm just getting some fresh air. This place is way too idle. It gets to you after a while. <sighs> Gotta take some deep breaths. Not that I'm rushing you, of course. I'll wait until you've made your preparations in full. When I was little, my mother often read me bedtime stories. Back then, I thought the world was just like in those stories, and everyone led peaceful, happy lives. It was only later that I realized the difficulties and struggles many people face in society. All I can do is try my best and stay loyal to the people I care about. Now that I think about it, even though the stories are fictional, they can still help children get a good night's sleep. To me, that's enough. <laughs> Got a job for me? Ask for it. 
supporting fire! Fire it up! Out of my way! Our bond is strong! Laid bare! This is where I'm Overruled! Check this out! Look alive! Ha! Transfixed! Everlasting as 